After done checking for the overturning and sliding, now we proceed with checking of the middle third and the bearing pressure of the retaining wall. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To check for the middle third, we use the equations for the eccentricity. The eccentricities of the loops needs to be less than d per 6 of the middle third. It is in the functions of half of the base minus an equivalent lever arm due to the vertical load. The x is calculated by obtaining sigma moment dividing by total vertical force with no factor of safety. Referring back to the table that we have done previously, the total vertical load is the summations of all the vertical load including the surcharge, soil and the weight of the wall. As for the total moment, is the summations of the moment which include also the active pressure and the weight of the member. The total vertical load is obtained as 47.5 and the total moment is obtained as 39.3 kNm. The X is obtained by dividing the total moment with the total vertical load and the eccentricity is determined as 0.005 m. It is then compared to the 1 per 60 which is 0.275 that means the member is now is within the middle third and no uplift is expected from this retaining wall. Next you need to check for the bearing pressure. The bearing pressure is expected to be in this mechanism and therefore this equation is used. First, you need to determine the rotational moment at this point which can be obtained by obtaining the vertical forces times the eccentricity. The Y here is the half of the height of the base. The I is obtained based on these equations and the effective contact surface area to the soil is given here. Substitute the relevant value into the equations, you obtain the stresses to be 29.3 and 28.3. The bearing capacity is given as 50, which is largest than the bigger stress. Therefore, the bearing capacity is considered acceptable.